Welcome, Wednesday night, Vintage Gaming. We're here with brand new combo deck, new Magic the Gathering cards from Commander, Boulders, Legends, Gates, one of those things. Maybe all of those things. Displacer Kitten, Cute Cat Beast. Uh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, exile up to one non-land target permanent you control and flicker that. Put it back on the battlefield. Uh, the combo, Teferi, Annie Moxon. So you cast your, you know, you cast, you, know, you, put, you bounce back your Moxon with your Teferi, you cast your Moxon, you reset your Teferi, you bounce back your Moxon, draw your whole deck, get infinite mana, cast some brain freezes, some mentors, some time walks. It's basically paradoxical outcome, except with cats. So who couldn't love that? Um, on a more serious note, it, it does do something nice where it, is not as weak as Pio is to Artifact Hate and Flusterstorm. Uh, both Teferi and Displacer play really nice against a Flusterstorm metagame. They don't play super great against a Pyroblast metagame, but, you know, Pyroblast is lame and ruins everything. So that's just how it is. So what we did is we took um, Andy Probasco, Brass Man's list from the uh, Team Series Invitational, and, and I and I made some changes to it. Uh, I cut Urza Saga from the deck. Um, Urza Saga is going to make your mana base worse. Is going to make you more susceptible to artifact hate. Uh, it, I felt like it looked pretty bad with Astrolabe. So I'm cutting Urza Saga from the deck. And what we get from cutting Urza Saga is we get to add more fetch lands. Which means we can get more basics. Which means we can play Astrolabe better. Uh, it also means that our mana is much improved. And we can actually splash for black. So we're going to splash Vamp, Demonic, and Yogwill. Um which I, th I think makes these decks more consistent and more strong. Uh, and so we are going to play the full uh, four Teferi, only three kittens. I don't think you need the fourth kitten. It is nice to have a PO that you can merchant scroll for. Uh, another nice kitten card is <laughs> Spellseeker. Uh, simply getting an Ancestral, and then you can even reset your Spellseeker and then get a time walk. Uh, I feel like that's probably overkill. You're probably going to win anyways, but if I can ever blink a Spellseeker with a kitten, I will be an extremely happy Magic player. Um, sideboard is basically, I ripped my PO sideboard and made a couple changes. Uh, so it's basically a PO deck, but without some of the weaknesses, it's shifted some of the, the power of the deck around and, and made you better against certain effects. Um, things to note, administrative notes, um, Magic Online has addressed me in terms of the Wind Trader problem. Um, as far as I know, this is the first time they've addressed the issue at all. Uh, so that is at least noteworthy. Magic Online posted this. Uh, we understand your frustration and are aware of the issue. Our team is actively continuing to improve and work on our tooling and processes to identify and manage bad actors. Um, we do know that they do ban accounts that do this. Uh, and at least in this, they have said they are aware of the issue. Uh, I personally would hope for some more systematic fixes that would limit the ability of these people to do these things. Um, but at the very least, Magic Online has said something. Something is usually better than nothing. Sometimes. Uh, the other thing to note is you might have noticed this Demonic Tutor that looks real fresh. Uh, a card not actually on Magic Online yet, but because all access passes back for Magic's 20th anniversary, or Magic online's 20th anniversary i should say uh you can spend 25 dollars and have access to almost all of the magic cards on mtgo uh for a set period of time i believe it's maybe a month maybe a month or so i'm, I'm not actually sure but i know i bought it um so that i could play with these cats tonight because these cats don't actually exist on magic online yet they're coming in treasure chests in about a week or so uh so if you are interested in magic online this is one of the best times to try uh, $25 and you get to spend the entire month with any cards, any deck, any format, whatever you want to play, uh, you have access to. Someone says until the 25th. Is that a, is that a Wednesday? Mm, 29th would make more sense, but we'll see. Um, 29th, 29th makes the most sense because 29th would be a Wednesday when they patch. So 
If you're thinking about trying Magic Online, now is a great time, $25, and all you can try, all the different decks, all the different cards. Good news is I now have four shredders I can use to make content with <laughs> for a couple weeks because those things are expensive. Um, all you need to do is go to the store and buy it, and it will automatically activate. Uh, usually, you should restart your Magic Online after you buy it. That usually helps a little bit, too. So we're going to jump in a league with this deck. I'm excited for this deck because this is very much my kind of deck. Tinker Citadel up my alley, very much like a PO deck. I'm hoping it's a banger. Uh, let's see if it is. Okay, we're in it to win it. Round one, Vintage League with uh, the cat deck. Teferi's Kittens is what I'm going to call it for now. Unless someone has a better name. Someone always has a better name. Let's see what we got. I like this hand. It doesn't have a force, but it has access to Flusterstorm, has access to fast mana and a Teferi, Brainstorm and a Fetch. I think this is worth keeping. Obviously, if my opponent kills me on turn one, I die. Obviously, if my opponent plays a Bazaar of Baghdad, I am in trouble because the clock is on. Let's see if they are Dredge or if they are a different kind of Bazaar deck. It was probably... Probably, oof. oh boy. All right, so playing against Squeevine, and that sounds like a terrible matchup. Teferi is a good card against Squeevine if I can get it down early, uh, but it's a little past the point, of, uh, actually, of, of getting it into play. Uh, I'm going to likely, I don't know. Going to likely brainstorm and try to find more action. Like, I think if Teferi is in play, it should beat Madness. But the problem is Teferi costs 3 mana and everything in this deck costs 0 mana. Uh, my opponent is also gaining card advantage using Squee. And my combo is not cheap. It costs, you know, 7-ish mana. Um... The nice part is it's a totally deployable over two turns. So, like, I can play Teferi, I, and then if I can get my Teferi to live, then I can untap and and, uh, and displace her kitty. But I am not feeling like we're going to have enough time. Uh, not only is my opponent about to put on the pressure with the Lizards, but they also have an abundance of counterspells, as they actually play some of the most number of counterspells of any deck in Vintage. Uh, even though they can't make any mana. Because 2022. So my opponent has pitched a Fury and a Force of Vigor. Has a Wasteland. Um, okay. Well, we are going to Brainstorm. And get a little value off our Brainstorm. I'm going to probably do it in response to this. Just in case I want to do something about this. Oh, we are so... So dead. So, so dead. I don't want this Yogwell. Um, we're probably going to have to cash in some Teferis just to, like, live. <laughs> uh, the problem here is, uh, another problem is I actually can't play for the play for Flusterstorm right now. So I think what I'm going to do is pass and take a hit. Uh, so the combination is when you play a Moxin, you can reset your Teferi with your cat. And then you can bounce your Moxin and replay a Moxin and reset your Teferi with your cat. And in that way, you are going to draw through your deck and make infinite mana. And then you can Tefer, and then you can Brain Freeze, or Mentor Time Walk, or most of the PO win cons. So any mana producing zero mana rock, uh, and Teferi, and Cat. Uh, unfortunately, just being on the draw in what I assume is quite a miserable matchup, holy moly, means we just have absolutely no chance here. I think what I'm going to do is just take a huge hit. And then, I don't know, pray. If we can maybe... Uh... I 
Oh, if you looked at the cardboard live list, the Felidar Guardians are Displacer Kittens. That could also be very confusing. Unfortunately, Cardboard Live doesn't have the... <laughs> the cardboard Hive doesn't have the uh, the card yet. So I put in a placeholder. So if you are looking at the Cardboard Live list, that would be confusing, I can say. Uh, I, 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 okay, okay, okay. All right, okay. Let's see what we can do. Uh, I have access to Soul Ring and mox opal i should have sequenced this in a different in the other order uh but it didn't end up mattering so what we're gonna do is we're going to to fairy and then we're gonna have to draw ancestral yeah i mean i have to fluster that this is why i was waiting till i had fluster this is still a winnable game, in my mind. This looks like it can still be won. And the way this can still be won is my opponent has one card left in hand. So as long as it's not Mind Break Trap, we can Teferi and bounce a Mox. And, oh my god, it's Mind Break Trap. What is it like? Okay. I really hate this deck. I really hate playing combo against Squeevine. It is just a brutal existence all right so can we still win this game theoretically yes we're gonna bounce opal try to draw like a time walk or an ancestral uh one of our power cards it's a little bit it, it is like delver but it's so much more broken than delver like all of your things are free all of everything is free I don't know. I, I'm starting to to hate the Delver comparison, to be honest. Time Walk, Ancestral. Gitaxian Probe technically technically works. Any Time Walks, Ancestrals? Ar Arkham's Astrolabe is not a good draw. Not a good draw. Okay, so yeah, on the play... Honestly, if we were on the play this game, there was probably some chances, but... On the draw, not really. So I have some options. I have a Tabernacle. I have a Tormod Script, a Needle, and a Lantern, and a Sphinx. Uh, and a, a, a Lavinia is quite good as well. Uh, we could choose Fluster Storms, but I'm not sure if those are, they're going to be necessary. Um, probably want access to Balance, but I don't know about Swords. There's a lot of cards. Uh, probably don't want to be a Citadel deck. Don't really need to be a Repeal deck unless our opponent chalice is us but i think you just don't play around chalice um i kind of don't want to be a po at all here don't really think we want to seek things uh i don't really need a misstep i actually think teferi is like pretty reasonable in the matchup which is a nice upside shouldn't need a yog will shouldn't need a slower card like dig something like this maybe makes sense to me one of our best ways to win is just Tinker with Counterspell Backup still. Okay, so what does this give us? This gives us a Kitten. And a lot of mana. Blinking Mana Vault. So we can play a Mana Vault, and then on the next turn we can play a Cat with Counterspell Backup. And if we don't have to use our Counterspell... We get to cast Merchant Scroll, but we don't have a PO or a Dig. We have just an Ancestral and not a lot of blue mana. This probably just has to go back because our opponent's deck is too strong for us to keep something like this. I think we just need to put this back. This looks much better. Not much better because there's a lot of problems with this hand as well, but definitely somewhat better. Probably don't need this Brain Freeze in our deck at all, to be honest. Maybe it's fine. Oh, now I have to choose what to do here. I think the answer is Island Ancestral on their upkeep. Because we can't afford to lose this Island without playing our Ancestral. I don't want to play a Soul Guide until I can maybe nab a Squee. So I think it makes the most sense to just cast the Ancestral. They have to have exactly Force of Will or a misstep to counter it, so. All right. 
So the good news is we have a lantern to slow our opponent down. The bad news is they kept a seven card hand, right? So it's going to be tough. No, they kept a six card hand with two masters. Okay, so we get to at least eat a master with a soul guide, which is nice. Um, Still don't really want to get wastelanded. Maybe I'm supposed to, I can go, yeah. All right. It's just not really beatable unless you're playing a Wasteland deck, unfortunately. You have to hope your opponent either mulligans a bunch or you play Wasteland. And if you don't play Wasteland and your opponent doesn't mulligan, I don't really feel like Squee is beatable. My opponent is just drawing a million cards every turn and I can't cast spells because they will just be countered. It's quite frustrating. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, the, my opponent plays like four mind break traps in their deck, so I have to try to sequence my spells in ways that I don't get mind break trapped. Uh, so now I can't even tabernacle them because they have a wasteland. Uh, I mean, I can technically beat them without drawing a Wasteland, but Wasteland is the way you beat them. Like, it, it is the best way to play against their deck, is to have Wastelands. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of need white mana, but I can't really... I, well, I guess I'll just get white mana, and if they want to Wasteland me, that opens at least opens me up to Tabernacling them, maybe. I don't have a Strip Mine in my deck, so it'd be pretty hard to draw it. So unfortunately, this doesn't really do anything without a Teferi. So... Though if I draw one of my four Teferis, I technically win on the spot. So, well, I don't technically win on the... Well, yeah, I do draw my... I draw through my whole deck. Yeah. So I win on the spot if I draw a Teferi and resolve it, which is a plus side. However, my opponent has a Wasteland to kill my Tundra... And a hollow one, and I'm just so dead. I'm just uber dead, unfortunately. My opponent has to draw a million cards every turn because they're returning Master of Deaths from their graveyard. They can sometimes play Guy's Cradle to Pump Root Walla, yep. Yeah. I think they have to hold this Wasteland for a possible Tabernacle. I agree, but it doesn't mean they will. Uh, I was going to fetch a basic island, to be perfectly honest. That's why. But then I didn't fetch a basic island, so fetching a tundra is better. I should not I should not have fetched a tundra. I should have played an underground sea. But I didn't. So they, they, they don't give a shit. Alright, well, now I have another out in my deck, which is Tabernacle. I actually don't want to play another cat, because I want to be able to force... I think this is the most, this is extremely greedy wasteland, but what, what am I going to do? There's no link. You just go to the store and it's in the store on Magic Online. My, my opponent has eight cards in hand right now. It's crazy. I think even if I get a Teferi... The problem here is going to be my opponent might even have double counterspell at that point. Well, I can draw Demonic now as well, as I can Tabernacle my opponent. Um, I have a lot of outs. I can still draw Tinker. There's a lot of good draws in my deck. Um, knowing that, I'll probably draw Moxon, but... They have Vigor and Counter. Man, brutal. Actually have to force a Vigor because 
Oh, they're going to Noxious Revival my land so that I don't have a card to draw. So I actually got punished for playing my Underground Sea instead of my Fetch Land. Unbelievable. All right, well, this is going to greatly reduce my chances of winning this game. I should not have pitched my Displacer. I should have just hard cast Force, probably. Log, stop it. Okay, so I shouldn't have played my Underground Sea. I should have played my Fetch Land. I drew Balance. Well, that would technically work if I didn't have to force the stupid Noxious Revival. If I technically work, I mean, I'm going to lose everything to do this, but. I keep not using my Soul Ring when I should be using my Soul Ring to save mana, but I don't have anything to use my mana for, so it doesn't really matter very much. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically just you. this matchup is atrocious, and there's not much you can do about it besides draw better or hope your opponent mulligans. I don't know. It hurts the soul. All right, let's try this again. Round two. Hopefully, we get to play some magic here. Oh, boy. Okay. Here's a here's a nice poll. Someone poll chat. Jam or not jam? The, an the answer is actually not jam. Because if you draw a blue card, you get to force. And then you would also get to um, uh, not use your land drop for your citadel. So... Oh, no, what? Chat, we're not jamming here. Jamming here is not good. Jam jamming here is horrible. It's not about being a coward. It's about playing well. Jamming, even if you resolve, means your citadel bricks and you lose the game. <laughs> All right, what do you got for me, opponent? Is it a bronze statue? Bronze guardian? <laughs> Holy shit. I got wrecked. All right, all right. I should have jammed. I should have jammed. I should have jammed. Good God. I should have jammed. What was I? I was an idiot. I didn't I didn't play around the, the Eldrazi matchup. Good God. I didn't play around Black Lotus Ancient Tomb Thought Knots here. My 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 apologies. Good gosh. <laughs> Too funny, man. I'm gonna hold this. Don't think that I I wanna be able to like displace right away if I need to. Yeah, I like like I said, I, I would never jam there just because uh of all the reasons I stated. Oh my lord, really? Okay, all right. Some colorless Eldrazi. Punished twice in a row. I didn't get punished at all last round. What are you talking about? No, I don't think I did la mattered last round. I look very dead here, though. If my opponent takes a ruby, it doesn't really matter. I think having the ruby for a displacer trigger is much more useful than like just jamming it out. Am I getting smash mashed? Human? Was this Athalia? Ah, uh, <laughs> Glow Rider. Glow Rider. Cool. I am not having a good time. <laughs> I I am straight up having a bad time. My opponent is playing a classic. 2015 vintage list called White Eldrazi. You got me, homie. Brainstorm is fucking broken. That's why it's restricted. You should never unrestrict Brainstorm. Good God. <laughs> it's so broken. I... Uh, do I even have five fetchables in my deck? Yeah, I guess I do. I have six. I have six fetchables. 
No, don't unrestrict ponder. Don't unrestrict brainstorm. Don't do any of that. I just want to play some spells, but I, uh, so the, the cool thing is I don't think I would have been able to have Tinker with force backup. <laughs> Perfect. I can repeal null rod maybe. No, I'm going to die if I crack my fetch land. I have five crutch lands I have to crack. I'm all, I wait, whatever. You got me, opponent. Uh, you got me. You've done it. Fantastic. Oh, my God. <laughs> I just want to... <sighs> Okay, all right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in Balance Swords Prismatic Ending. Uh, Sphinx of the Steel Wind. I'm going to take out Citadel, Flusterstorm, Flusterstorm, Misstep. Uh, I feel like I don't really want to be freezing. And maybe we'll play this little video on the play. I think I'm going to keep the PO, uh, the PO on the play. Maybe something like this. Seems reasonable. Lavinia is probably only good on the play. This is a classic Arkham's Astrolabe hand, if I've ever seen one. Ha, <sighs> yeah. Nope, I don't think this is a keep. Let's try again. Okay, all right. I'm going to do that one. I'm going to probably divination. Fortunately, it's an underground sea, so I can't play my mentor, but. Okay. All right, well, if I get wastelanded, I probably lose. I can't actually mystical for Tinker. Because I don't have another blue source. My opponent has another black lotus draw. So I guess I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I was just supposed to not play PO and just cast Mystical for Tinker in response to Thalia and then hope that I don't get Wasteland. Oh, no, that would not have worked either. Cool. Well, this is fun. They didn't have a land. Oh, I can't play that. Perfect. Awesome. Great. Well, I think I'm uh, playing the Thalia versus Mana Crypt game here. Can their Thalia race their Mana Crypt? Also known as good, clean Magic the Gathering. It's a good draw. It's quite a good draw. They drew a Wasteland. It did draw a wasteland, so now I can't mystical tutor. If I had kept vampiric over mystical, I could vamp for um, Talarian Academy, and we would be able to play magic. But I kept mystical because I was worried. So the reason I kept Mystical is because it's more likely that I'll be able to Mystical than Vamp if my if I get Wastelanded, right? But maybe that's a bad reasoning. Alright, I mean, those are great draws. 
Maybe I should have fetched a basic island in case they drew another wasteland off the top. It's possible I was supposed to keep a get a basic just in case they drew another wasteland. But I guess if they, I feel like if they draw another wasteland, I'm super dead anyways, right? I don't even know if I want to un un null rod. I don't think I want to un null rod. I probably want ending either way though. It's just better flexibility. Yeah, that is the line I was considering for sure. I was definitely considering. Mentor into ending. Watch us get swords to plash here just here. That would be pretty funny. I guess we can't because Dolly is protecting us. Never mind. Never mind. It was free. Oh, Cavern of Souls. All right. We got another creature here, maybe? Human. Oh no, we're being attacked by Thalia. Wait, so do we win the game off this? If I hit the Null Rod and... I don't think I have enough blue mana, right? So if I were to go white, blue... Hmm. So close. It's okay, we can... We can just hit the, the Thalia. Use the Thalia attacks to make two colors. Just go for their face. I don't think we need to combo them here. I feel like going face is pretty winning as it is. Though they have won a lot of flips here. Alright, so do you have a Displacer? Or do you have a Glow Rider? Glow Rider means I can't... Oh, Thalia, three mana Thalia. Okay. So I could just bounce the Thalia, or I could bounce a Mox and get my thing. It's just probably better to bounce the Thalia. Just attack them for try to get in for lethal. Oh my God. A hell of a draw. Oh, I don't have enough mana still. Eh, I still don't have enough mana. Never mind. Should probably should not have played out the Talarian Academy. It exposes me to Wasteland pretty hard. But my opponent's now at three life with a mentor in play. And they're losing pretty badly, so it shouldn't matter very much. Second to Fairy would definitely be killing them. Alright. So Monastery Mentor still good against creature decks confirmed. Uh, I don't really want Lavinia on the draw. I guess I will take a... Hercules Recall instead. Might be a little bit better. Give me another... Out I don't think I need another out to Null Rod, though. Maybe I'll just take a dig. Well, my opponent did turn off all of their own mana with a Null Rod, which is... Not usually an issue for my opponent's deck, but it can be. Oh, uh, man. Three drop flying rug? Doesn't matter. It's not on Magic Online. <laughs> I, I don't think it's good. No. Um, I, I would say it's probably not great. God, I'm going to get run over by a keep with this hand. But I think I'm supposed to. Um... No, I'm just going to get taxed out of this game. <laughs> Come on now. No shot I did to do anything with this hand. 
Uh, I think the rug is like a little too underpowered. All right, okay. Sure. I think I'm gonna actually get the basic island, even though I can't cast my Teferi, just so I can play my Sapphire, so that I can actually use my Academy later. Oh, we're so far behind if they just have mana. Stony Silence, sure. I'm glad I didn't bring in Hercules Recall. That does not look like he would have done very much. Um, should I play my Mana Crypt out is the next relevant question. Good God, I don't know. Probably. Well, if my opponent simply plays a land and plays a Thought Knots here, I'm like extremely far behind, right? So it kind of depends on if they have mana and lands and creatures. All right, so they have nothing else. That's good. So now... I think I just get a Kitten in play and then look for a Teferi next turn, but I don't really know how much we're going to get off of this like we can't actually make m mana off of our kitten but uh, we can keep resetting to fairy and bounce their thing every turn oh my god i'm getting swords what's happening okay no kittens then okay mm -hmm. Sure. So this costs, what, five mana to Ancestral? Oh, they drew an Eldrazi tempo. But they didn't have an Eldrazi. That's good. If they had drawn an Eldrazi, I would have ranked that as bad for us. But they didn't have an Eldrazi, so that's that's nice. So I, this is two mana, three mana, four mana, five mana, so I can Merchant for an Ancestral. Is that better than anything else? Uh, probably, because I probably need to have access to Force, but I'm not really going to have access to Force right away. Ah, uh, boy, boy, boy. Hmm. They must have another Swords, right? I think they have a second Swords, though. Like, what else do you have? You don't have any lands. You don't have any creatures. You don't have any of these spells. It has to be second swords. So I think what I want to do is deploy Teferi first. No, no, no. Cat again, I think, is bad. I'm pretty sure they're just going to swords it if I play another cat. What else can possibly be in their hand if there are no lands in their hand, no creatures in their hand, no spells in their hand that are no permanent spells? It's definitely swords. Well, there's no combo, really, because that costs one more and doesn't make mana. Swords does not force a Tomb Tap. That's just incorrect. All right, I'm going to play a Teferi. I'm just going to plus my Teferi. I guess they could have Containment Priest. I don't think I want to bounce my own crypt yet because it's currently making me extra mana. So the the only way that plussing to fairy here is bad is if my opponent top decks reality smasher. That is the only way plussing to fairy goes badly for me. Is top deck reality smasher. Let's see what happens. Nope, top deck temple. Okay, so now I can play a cat and it won't get killed. And I can extract some amount of value. I would think I would think that's probably true. So I can play. I can play a cat. If I play a cat and then I bounce back my my mana crypt, and then I use my one mana to play a ruby, and I get to draw a card. Uh, if I bounce Sphere, I draw through my whole deck. 
but I don't make any additional mana. So... Mm, is that good? I don't know if that's good. I guess we just draw Force of Will and hold up an extra mana source. Yeah, that might be good enough. Well, it doesn't make mana. So I can't always yield this thing, right? You can't play any spells here. Sorry, friend. There's a Teferi in play. I, I knew they had swords, chat. I It was the easiest read of my life. I knew they had swords. Like, that was... Oh. God, I feel a little, at, least, at least a little vindicated there. That makes me feel better. I'm not that bad at magic. Yeah, I guess drawing our whole deck is probably good. They can't have Mind Break Trap. I have Teferi. Teferi is the most broken card that's ever existed. Actually, we can bounce these if I... Because I have more zeros in my deck. So once I draw my zeros... I can I can bounce. Yeah, yeah, we actually do win from here. That's kind of nuts. We're just murdering them through Null Rod Stony Thorn because Teferi is so broken. Wow, that's kind of crazy. That's like... That's really wild. That's really, really wild. I, I, that's, it's actually really impressive. To, I mean, to, I knew Teferi is like pretty broken magic card, but this is really nice that the combo piece is an actual good card. I mean, Displacer is not really an actual good card, but the thing it combos with is a Mox and a Teferi, and those are good cards. I can't do always whatever. I could do always yield, maybe. That might help a little bit, but. No, because they never have uh, a timing window where the Teferi's not on the battlefield. The Teferi immediately just flips over. It's a flicker effect. I probably can use a different spell now, but I'm just, it's fine. Okay, so now I bounce your stony silence and now I have access to all my mana and did I keep in any of my combo pieces? <laughs> I boarded out the brain freeze, right? I did board out the brain freeze. So I already have my tinker target. I kind of need Mentor plus Time Walk. Yeah, I boarded the Freeze out, so I have to just do Mentor Time Walk. Uh, 
this is going to take a slight amount of time. All right, my opponent has conceded to that. Wow. Um, that is really impressive. That was, like, they, like, the fact that my opponent had double Stolny Silence, Thorn in play, and it very easily won through that is... Really interesting. Really, really interesting. I'm, I'm, that makes me kind of excited. All right, here we go. Now let's, let's, let's see what we can do. I'd like to do what we just did again. However, this hand has no mana, which is not going to help us there. Yeah, I mean, like, Tabernacle can be good, but if you just wait one turn before deploying your threats, and then you play your threats with a Wasteland, you can't lose the Tabernacle, right? Like, it wouldn't, Tabernacle would not have saved us, I mean, it would have saved us because our opponent used their Wasteland, I think, a little greedily, but you can, pl you can play around Tabernacle. Okay, I mean, this hand has some issues, but... The reason I'm keeping both to fairies is because I want to be able to pitch one to force. I don't really like Island Lotus to fairy, but it might just be necessary. It's an interesting to lead on Wasteland. So normally I'm not a big fan of countering Foundry Inspector, but because our opponent sequenced in a way that I think is suboptimal, I'm gonna probably force this. This is why this is why you always play if you're playing shops, your sequencing matters. You don't want to show them your land. Because if they go black lotus foundry inspector and you don't show your land, you could easily follow this up with a workshop plus a, a thing that matters. Uh, but because my opponent showed me their wasteland, they gave me critical information that makes me want to counter this. Like, they can still have Mock Sphere, but it's le it's way less threatening because they don't have a, a workshop. Oh, God. Mana Vault Trinisphere? All right. I All right, what am I talking about? I know nothing. I'm an idiot. I'm a fucking idiot. Sure. I was, I was, it was a bait. God damn it. I still think I you should even if this is your line, I still don't think you're supposed to show Wasteland first. If my opponent doesn't have a, a, a soul land or a workshop, it means they're also underneath this Trinisphere, and so it's not a huge deal, but we'll see what happens. How's it going, Andy? Andy, oh my god, they have a workshop too. Andy, if you go on my Twitter, there's a there's a there's a photo of a combo turn we just did with this deck where my opponent had double stony silence plus a null rod or double double stony a null rod, a stony silence, and a thorn out, and we just combo killed through it. It was really cool. Uh all right. So if I technically draw another land off the top, we might be able to play magic. This I can't target this though, so maybe not. I'm just saying you're giving your opponent extra information on what your land drop is going to be. The cool part about this deck list is we do have three basics, which is nice against Wasteland. Yeah, I think that, <laughs> I do think that that play is the only play so far on this entire stream that has been interesting because we've just been murdered by Squee. And then our other games versus Eldrazi were not per 
particularly interesting. I mean, I, it's definitely possible my opponent just baited the shit out of me uh, with the way they sequenced. And if that's the case, props to them. I have, I have no problem saying I've been baited and outsmarted here. But I also think it's a pretty reasonable teaching moment for why you want to sequence in certain ways, hiding information, that kind of thing. I should be very dead here. This is why Trinisphere is restricted. That's enough of me. Um, yeah. It would have been pretty bad either way if we, even if we had been able to force the Trinisphere. But it definitely would have been better. All right, so same similar idea as um, our last round. We're going to bring in Lavinia on the play, all of our removal and our Sphinx. Except this time we get to bring in Hercules Recall as additional removal. We're going to bring out Citadel, Dig. We're going to bring out Pio. Well, we might keep Pio on the play. I haven't decided on that one yet. Um, I don't really like the idea of having Brain Freeze in my deck. I don't really like the idea of Spells. Well, Spellseeker finds Harkles, so maybe I do like the idea of Spellseeker. Don't like Fluster Storms. Don't like Misstep. Don't like Probe. Don't really like Ponder. Um, maybe we'll just get rid of the, pot, the Pio as well, and we'll just play these cards. Seems fairly reasonable. Try that. I don't know. I don't know. I want Max to fairies for my kittens, but maybe I'm supposed to like board out some of the combo in this kind of matchup where it's not as good. Hard to say. So I can get three cards out of my opponent's hand. It's probably not good enough considering we don't have blue mana. So let's try again. Uh, a classic Astrolabe Mox in hand. This one technically casts Repeal, but nothing else. So I guess we mulligan. Uh, this is our best hand. Doesn't cast anything, technically, but. I mean, our hands have been no lands every single time. I don't really think it's the Astrolabe's fault that our hands have had no lands. What? No, none of our hands were keepable if we did, like, the Astrolabe was any other card anyways. Like, it's not because of the Astrolabe that any of those hands were mulligans. Those hands were just mulligans. <laughs> this is not a huge deal if we draw a literal fetch land. Or even a Moxon, we can play our Mentor, and we at least have something going for us. Though our opponent did show us Walking Blissa, which is not super common these days. Uh, Preordain is just a horrible card. I don't want to play Preordain if I can help it. I really strongly dislike Preordain right now. I think the card is really bad. No, no, I think it's like not a good card to play right now. Like, Preordain is so bad, people are playing Consider instead of playing Preordain. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the state of the world right now. Like, Astrolabe is a effective... I think Astrolabe turning our kitten into an actual card when we don't have a Teferi is important. I think, like, of the cards in our combo, kitten is the worst by itself, which make, makes you want to include things that make your kitten better, right? Because you can cast it at instant speed and it fills up your graveyard. 
So you can hold up Pyroblast and Flusterstorm. Uh oh. So I can't actually cast any spells for the rest of this game. So this mentor might not actually be good enough. But we we've been Trinisphered twice, which is unfortunate. We did mold a, a very low number number this game. So man, this has not been a very interesting league. We've gotten vintage quite a lot. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, free ball just leads to games that end immediately. It's very much like Tinker in that regard, but Tinker, you can actually fluster a pyro, so. So our opponent's going to get to make huge constructs with their saga while we can't cast any spells, and the power of three ball compels us. We actually drew, like, not unreasonable cards, but... Just not good enough card when our opponent has us underneath a three ball on turn one again. Yeah, like you're you like Tr Trinisphere unfortunately compels you to play the game out for at least a little while. Whereas if you get tinkered, you can just concede. I would snap make another construct, homie. Definitely make another construct here. That doesn't sound correct. What do you have follow up that makes this better? That's worse. Yeah, okay. Sure. E I mean, true, but also Tinker is like more findable than Trinisphere, right? So. Oof, man, we've had some serious non-games. Brutal. All right, let's try this another time. Now we're in round four. Uh, Retro has been playing a variety of decks, so we'll have to see what they play today. Um, I hope it's not Dredge, because our hand is not very good against Dredge. Oh, yeah, no worries, McGee. GG's, you murdered the, murdered the crap out of me. <laughs> all right and unfortunately it's dredge every time i ask for it not to be bizarre of baghdad it is unfortunately bizarre of baghdad we do have our combo but again our combo costs seven mana so not ideal um i don't know what i'm gonna do i think i'm just going to try to cantrip my way into something because what else am i going to do I think I need to hold this probe as a, a blue card to counter with force. All right, well, now I have this. So I don't need this. Oh, my opponent has a force of will and a vigor, but they don't have the ability to cast either of them. All right, so let's play another astrolabe then. Uh, we just need to find more fast mana so that we can combo off. Okay, I don't know if we have enough turns is my current issue. Because we won't be able to play our Teferi if they mill into any Icarids. Yeah, they hit an Icarid, a Narcomoeba, triple bridge from below, double prized Amalgam. So I think we're going to die. Not this turn, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean... Preordain would also been fine here, right? It's not a huge deal. I don't really think the Arkham's Astrolabe thing matters too much in terms of this kind of matchup, so... Yeah, I don't see us... Like, so, if we get a turn... Which we're gonna get a turn... We're not going to get two turns. It doesn't look like we're going to get two turns. So what we need to do is Ancestral into Time Walk and that, and then hit multiple Moxen and then combo kill our opponent. It's possible. This is a... Oh, they hit a second therapy? Ah. Uh, that's not that bad though, right? Because they don't have any way to get a blue card. So I can force the first therapy. 
Shit, I can't really force the first therapy. All right, I have to let the first therapy resolve and hope they don't name a card in my hand. And then I can force pitching PO on the second therapy. And then we just need to ancestral into all Moxin and time walk, maybe. It's winnable. It's winnable. It's winnable. It's winnable, I swear. All right, they hit forcible with the first therapy. So now they get to probably just take the ancestral, in which case. We probably are limited to just hitting a Moxon to play. P Even our PO is not great. I mean, they made the correct play, right? They therapied Ancestral, or they therapied for Force first, and then they get to pick with their best card here. Um, boy, oh boy. So, is there any way we live through two turns? Even if there was, we kind of need to play Kitten this turn, so we still need to hit a Moxon. So, what if we just hit Lotus? Is it enough? We're one mana short, right? If we hit Lotus and then Teferi bounce into another Moxon, that would do it as well. Mm, I don't think you're supposed to force the first therapy there. Maybe that you are, because it's hard for them to name any of the cards. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Monastery Mentor. Mm -hmm. I didn't hit a Moxon. So my opponent is going to Icarid plus 3, 5, 7, 10, 13, plus any number of chills what they have access to Grave Troll, plus a Imp in their hand. Oh, no, they don't have all the chills, though. They have two chills away. So my problem is... So if I play a Raveler and I bounce my Ruby and I draw Black Lotus, I can play Kitten, but I can't blink anything. So it doesn't even get me there. If I play Mentor, I just like lose my whole hand to Therapies, probably. Don't think Mentor actually gets me. I guess if Mentor, if I've determined Mentor gets me nowhere, then there's kind of no reason not to play Teferi and just try to draw into a... Well, I can't even draw into an Ancestral. I have no idea. I have no idea what I'm drawing into. Nothing? Uh, nothing, probably. I don't want to get these therapy away. So, all right, they activate their bazaar in response. No, what? Why not? I don't think Lotus does it though. That's my. That's what I'm trying to say. Even hitting Lotus, like we play a kitten, but it doesn't actually do anything. Let's just play a kitten. So I think if I was my opponent, I would respond to my Icarid trigger by activating Bazaar. I don't. I think this is another time. I did record a video recently where I played against Retro where I commented the same thing. If you're playing Dredge, you want to activate your Bazaar in response to Icarid trigger. Um, I'm going to let them know at the end of this match. Because I think this is the second time this has happened. So they should kill Teferi. They don't know that, though. And they actually didn't hit super well. They hit one Therapy. And they're not killing Teferi. Okay, this is good for me. And they didn't use their therapy. Okay, so my opponent missed on their Icarid damage, missed on Creeping Chills, uh, and didn't use their new therapy. So all we need to do is draw a Mox and we win. So I have to PO now. Because if I play a kitten, I have no way of bouncing. Because I have only four mana. So I have to PO. Jeez. So I have to PO and I have to hit... 
two more moxen. This is not good. A moxen, two moxen and a land. I'm gonna peel for four. I'm not gonna pick up the, the fairy. Yeah, I'm just gonna pick up. Like, this is another spot where astrolabes are really good as a thing I can use for my PO. All right, I think I have to hit really high, high, high roll here. I need like land moxen moxen probably. I got it. I got it. Okay, this is winning. I think this is winning. Crypt, soul ring, opal, kitten. Okay, so this is actually wins. My opponent should not have let this happen, but there is some learning curve, and you get some, uh, you get some equity by being a rogue deck. So that's sweet. Yeah. It's a little rough because we probably shouldn't win this game, but it happens. Yep. This is a very simple uh, play mentor, uh, then mystical for time walk and kill our opponent. My opponent decided not to kill me, so... And they also decided not to kill Teferi, which means I got to do all the cool stuff. I think my opponent should just concede, so I don't have to do this anymore, but... Infinite mana, infinite cards, yep. You are correct. Yeah, it is definitely not the friendliest amount of triggers. Oh, we got there, though. All right, so we get to steal game one against Dredge. Uh, I want a Sphinx, and I want the, account the graveyard stuff. And the Lavinia, and maybe the balance. I don't know. I go back and forth on if balance is actually good against Dredge. Uh, I don't really like Paradoxical Outcome or uh, Citadel or Dig or Repeal. Uh, obviously, my opponent can play Chalice, but whatever. I have Fairies, anyways. Um, this Brain Field seems. Brain Freeze seems super unnecessary. Is there ever a point in time where a mentor time walk is not going to be good enough? Why are we playing this brain freeze? That I don't understand right now. Don't really need all these islands. I guess we do need islands for astrolabes. But I don't need mental mist up. Yeah, I understand it, like, it can sometimes snag up bizarre, but it's pretty unlikely. Spellseeker seems slow, sure. I actually don't think I want Yogwell in this this matchup with this set of uh, cards as well. I just don't understand why we... Do we need this Brain Freeze in our deck? 
Like, if we are drawing with Teferi, is there ever an instance where Mentor Time Walk isn't good enough? Like, we have Yogwill. We have Citadel. Like, we can always Mentor Citadel, too. We don't even need Mentor Time Walk because we can Mentor Citadel. We can make a million Monk Tokens, sack them all, blink our Citadel, sack them all again. I'm not sure, like... Hmm. Is this a keep? Yeah, my, my I, I suspect that brain freeze is likely unnecessary in our deck, which is sweet. We get to open up some slots for something else. I don't know if this is a keep. I'm going to try it, though, because I'm kind of interested. I have a tabby for slowdown, and I have vamp for um, something else, like a needle or something. I don't know. Needle or even crypt or something. I feel like this should be enough, like a force backup vampiric with a tabernacle. Maybe that's not good enough. It's not just Tabby. It, I have two pieces of hate. And I don't expect my opponent to bring in Wastelands against like a PO deck, right? Well, it's pretty far away from Tinker for Sphinx, right? We're probably going to have to hit another like a graveyard card first. But I mean, I have force protection for a way to clear the graveyard, and then I graveyard clear plus tabernacle. I feel like that should be close to good enough. Maybe I get both of my forces cabal therapy, and it's not good good enough. I didn't really consider that. Double chill pre active. Oh, they did bring in wasteland. Maybe I'm going to get punished for my bad sideboarding play. Huh. I wasn't super convinced that the hand was a keep, but I wanted to try because it felt reasonable enough. Well, so an unfortunate thing is creeping chills are 12 damage, 16 damage, 17 damage, 19 damage. So that's kind of an issue as well. There's a gag in this deck? Interesting. All right, so what do I get? I kind of need to hit... I can get a Soul Guide Lantern and hit the Icarid. I don't think I'm going to lose to Icarids here. No, no, no. I have to play this Tabby or I'm going to go too low. Can't wait any longer. I guess if my opponent has Force of Will and Negation... Like, I could lose that way. I think I just want to get a Soul Guide Lantern. It runs into Mental Misstep, but... Alright, sweet. So I'm going to kick their Icarid. I guess they can have Vigor this way, but... And then I'm going to... Kill their Hollow One. There are two chills exiled. Unfortunately, because I didn't play Tabernacle on turn one, I took four extra damage. 
why not Tormons? Well, the reason is I want them to dredge and I'm going to hit them with Lantern. So like you want them to put as much in as possible so that your card gets the most value. And so because and if I play Tormaz, I have to crack right away or else they hit me with Icarid. Um, so Lantern lets me take their Icarid and make them dredge. And then once they put triggers on the stack, like if I can hit a Creeping Chill with the Lantern, then I'm not going to die to Creeping Chills. So Narc Amoeba is not a problem. First Creeping Chill. Okay, actually they missed on Icarids and they hit one chill. So I don't have to, I don't have to Soul Guide Lantern yet. So now I can even wait longer. Because I, I can't die to Narc Amoebas or Amalgams because I have a Tabernacle. Unless they draw Wasteland, to be fair. But they're dredging, so they shouldn't have a wasteland. So I should be able to wait here on my soul guide lantern. I'm probably playing this pretty close to the edge, but all right. So they hit their last chill, and I have to I have to soul guide this, which means I'm probably going to die to Icarids, unfortunately. We'll have to see what happens. I have a, po a ponder still, though, so. I'm also real dead if they have, like, a... a they shouldn't have anything left over, right? Because they had at least the dredge for turn. They might have one card. Shouldn't have anything, though. Ponder, what do you got for me? Emerald? I don't think I want an emerald. Probe. Oh. Gonna have... Oh, I probably should have fetched a basic so I could play an astrolabe. Okay. Alright, well... It's not good. Put it that way. It's not good. My opponent is gonna activate Bazaar and put... Double Stinkweed Imp in the yard, and then Dredge for turn, and if they hit uh, Icarid, we're going to die to the Icarid. But if they miss on an Icarid, then we have another turn. Okay, so they actually had a hollow one and a misstep? What? Oh, no, they probably just drew that for turn. Oh, they hit an Icarid, but they didn't hit a creature, but they have a Stinkweed up in their hand. Okay, so we are, if they if they understand how to use Icarid, we are dead on board. Because my opponent can activate Bazaar, put the Stinkweed Imp into, play, into the graveyard, and then return the Icarid. Okay, I now live. I now live for a turn. I now live for a turn. Uh, let's see if our opponent figures out how to get an Icarid in play. No, Icarid needs a black creature to be exiled. They have a Stinkweed Imp. Okay, so they didn't figure it out, so the Icarid stays in the yard again. Right, I need I need to make sure I let my opponent know. After the match. Okay, so now they have these a shambling shell and a stinkweed imp. So n so that means we're gonna live for an even another turn unless they hit another Icarid. They didn't hit another Icarid. So I can pay for my kitten and I win the game with a Teferi draw. Four out of forty-four. Not tap this island because I can draw an astrolabe, Justin. Do not tap the island. Tap. Doesn't matter, as long as it's not the island. Misty Rainforest. So, I did not draw the required card to win the game. There were a lot of cards that probably won us the game there. That was not one of them. 
So now I'm going to have to throw the kitten in front of the nightmare. Nightmare? Horror. I have to throw the kitten in front of the horror. And then, I mean, it's kind of a horror in itself, right? It's fine. And then they're going to activate Bizarre. Be careful. Seven cards in hand. Seven cards in library. Be careful. Oh, <gasps> no, opponent. That is not the play. That is not the play. I'm sorry to inform you. <laughs> that is not the play. All right, onward and upwards, round five. Oh, chat. I love that we are in the same time slot to play Magic the Gathering as Absorbent 3. This is a, a fan favorite. They like to play... How do I describe this? They like to play creature-based hate bear lock decks. That's how I would describe their, uh, their deck building. They like to put things in play that stop me, but they're not a blue player. They're more of a creature player, and that makes for some interesting magic cards that you don't normally see. So hopefully that is still true. They haven't succumbed to the dark side. That's a hell of a magic hand. Holy shit. I would elect to keep. Wow, that is a hell of a hand. Um, hmm. So knowing my opponent, I don't expect them to have blue base counter magic. So I think I'm going to cheat a little bit on my sequencing and just go Black Lotus Ancestral. I don't think there's any reasonable reason to play to fair. I mean, I guess they could have Mental Misstep. But then I can just use my cash and my fluster. They have Simeon Pyre blasted me before. That is true. But then my fairy. I don't know. I just don't want to play this to fairy right away if I don't have to. Maybe I'm still supposed to. Mm, I'm just going to play Black Lotus Ancestral. See if they have anything. They don't. So this is kind of the reason I didn't want to do anything involving Teferi is because I wanted to be able to make sure I could, if I drew Astrolabes, I'd be able to use them. So... I can play a Soul Ring. And then I can play an, uh, an Astrolabe. And then I can use my Astrolabe to turn my Soul Ring into regular mana. Okay, so I think that's fine. We'll play an Island... And an Astrolabe. And then there's a Merchant Scroll. Okay. So then we'll play a Soul Ring. And we'll definitely at least turn one of these into another Astrolabe. Well, we don't need to. We could just... Well, we are going to... Uh, yeah, maybe we do want to do that. Hmm, I don't know. Not sure. Not sure. Trying to find the most value line. It might be something like... Play to fairy, bounce back... My own pearl. And that way I can hold up Flusterstorm. Yeah, I like this. So now I get to play another Astrolabe. But then this Astrolabe holds up Flusterstorm off of the pearl. Cool. All right. I think that worked out pretty well. I don't know if that's like the most optimal I could have sequenced, but it feels pretty high. We do have Merchant Scroll for our one of PO. That's true. We are going to be a little bit of mana short for that, though, because uh, I chose to use my Teferi. All right. So they're on Arid Mesas now. That's a little bit different than the typical Windswept Heath. Let's see what they got for. Oh, and then it's still Taiga, though. Okay. 
So you've got access to red, green, and white mana. What do you choose to do with it? Pyrostatic Pillar. I really don't think I want a Pyrostatic Pillar in my life. I'm going to elect to not get Pyrostatic Pillared. That would be bad, I think. So currently I'm at five mana. All right, well, now I have a million mana. All right, well, now I'm going to PO, and this game is probably over. Yeah, it's an Eidolon. Uh, we will have to question how much of these Astrolabes we're picking up. I'm just going to pick up all of them. Um, all right, well, we hit a Yogwill, which I assume does something. Mm, we don't actually, yeah, I guess just, let's just Yogwill then. Um, does it make sense to like Arkham's Astrolabe into a Yogwill? Probably. Well, that actually leaves me just, what, one mana short of Citadel? Well, no, what if I repeal my Crypt? Repeal my Crypt and then Citadel? Probably good. Probably strands my Ancestrals and stuff, but... Oh. Oh my god, my Teferi is giving my Time Walk instant speed so I can actually cast it in response to this Mystical Tutor. That's kind of nice. And then I guess we'll put... Uh, oh, I have a brain freeze. Hey, look, the brain freeze! Got him! I can't believe we found a way to win that turn. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. That was certainly... PO with extra steps. <laughs> that was definitely uh, PO with extra steps for sure. All right, so I'm going to bring in this Sphinx of the Steel Wind because I suspect my opponent will stop me from casting spells. And I'm going to bring in these Prismatic Endings because they seem really good against my opponent, as long with, along with Swords and Balance. And then I think we just are not Citadel versus our opponent. I don't really feel like we're Brain Freezing versus our opponent. I feel... don't know how good Mistup is against them. I'm not really sure what's in their deck. Probably Pyroblast, so maybe I'll leave in Mistup. We'll just take out Flusterstorms. And... That Freeze wasn't even lethal. No, nah, it was like 45. I think it's fine. That, that's They're not going to be able to win, so I think it's okay. Uh... It's going to be all right. Um, I think the PO is going to go. Maybe you're supposed to get rid of like the Mox Opal, but it feels a little rough to get rid of like, combo pieces. Oh, yeah. I had Ancestral, but I didn't have any blue mana. Nah, their deck is... Uh, ooh. That is turn one Tinker, unless something happens. So I'm going to try. I assume something will happen, but who knows what okay. Mishra's factory. That is not something I expected to happen. Okay, I, I mean, I am going to jam. This is a jam spot. Yeah, I mean, people people tend to have a certain amount place of time where they can cat uh where they can play magic and ours seem to align a lot all right i'm gonna put a sphinx in play i don't know if they can beat a sphinx but that's our turn oh we got trapped fair enough 
Fair enough. I don't think I'm ever playing around trap in this situation, so. We still have our backup combo. Do we do need lands? What do you got for me? Ruby, factory, stand up factory. Every time I am just surprised. So they were banking on the mind break trap being good. Fair. Fair. Okay, they have a they do have a land. They have a taiga. It was good. I agree. So I don't have any more mana. Still. I this is okay though. I don't think I'm supposed to brainstorm myself here, like brainstorm block myself here if I don't have to. Void Mirror. I don't really care about that card very much. Well, it's like annoying, but I think it's just something we battle through instead of something that we care too much about. Ooh, Cavern? That's exciting. What are we naming? Goblin? What do you have? Is it like an, a Hierarch? Oh, it's a stand-up factory. Okay, fair. Ooh, Demonic Tutor. Okay. Uh, what does that do for us? So let's brainstorm first and then use our tutor to fetch away the cards we don't want. Which is a lot of them. Bottom left corner of the screen. Huh. I didn't hit a land. It's kind of problematic that I didn't hit a land, right? I don't really want to pitch... I think I just want to pitch both these top deck tutors. Am I just supposed to get demonic for a land? I feel like I am. Yeah, I don't think I want Soul Ring. I think I would rather just get a fetch. Yes, Felidar Guardian equals Displacer Kitten. Well, it was not just DT for land. I also shuffled away my brainstorm. Let's 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 keep to the facts. All right, what do you got for us? A goblin that costs four mana. Oh, I love them. They're my favorite. They're my absolute favorite opponent. That would have killed my kitten, by the way. That would have definitely killed my kitten. What is this? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Simeon Spirit Guide. Elvish Spirit Guide. Chalice on one. Okay, wow. All right, Whew. Force a little, uh, a little late, a little late force. So I think we just play cat and then go for the win next turn. Well, maybe we can just time walk now. We just go for a time walk and then we prismatic ending the void mirror. Probably fine. I uh, can't draw Black Lotus. Repeal. All right, I'm just gonna. Play my kitten, hold up Force of Will, and then next turn kill them with Teferi Combo! Pipe!
I'm glad that my opponent played their twin shot sniper and did not kill my cat with it. That would have been sad. I would not have liked that very much. I even have Pyroblast cover, which is sweet. It was a little bit of a greedy line. Didn't really need to time walk plus ending, but... That is true. Force can't stop a sniper off the top. Uh, that would be bad. I agree. All right, so... Looks like we're doing it. So just Teferi. Reset my Moxin. And then that's my Moxin. Play my thing. Reset my Teferi. And we do it. Sweet. Kind of an interesting league. We didn't really get... like We got kind of murdered by Shops and, and Dredge, but I'd like to play against some of like the blue decks at some point. That'd be pretty cool. But this one pretty, went pretty well. The combo itself is feasible. And the resiliency is pretty nice. The, I think the big reason that the cat... The, I think the big reason the combo feels really nice is because Teferi it makes it so you can't really do any... Uh, like, opponent can't do anything about it, right? Like, the big reason is this just this Teferi is nasty. All right, they're off it. Uh, yeah, that went pretty well, actually. The fact that Teferi is good and Moxin are good make up for the fact that Kitten is a little bit of an underwhelming Magic the Gathering card. And it works out pretty well. I think this Brain Freeze is completely unnecessary. I don't really see a need to play the Brain Freeze. Um, what does that let us do? I do think you want to play for Teferi. I agree, not me. I agree. We do get an extra slot now. It's possible you want to play, like, an ending in the main. I don't know. Like, we do have a lot of tutors and ways to make that good. Maybe we want to play, like, a piece of Dredge or Shop's Hate. Uh, I could theoretically play, I don't know, Soul Guide Lantern. That would, you could bounce Soul Guide Lantern with Cat. But it's not even that good to bounce Soul Guide Lantern with Cat. Could just play Karn. Yeah. We are, yeah, we probably should. Probably should. That's that's very reasonable. Uh, I don't really think I need to add any artifacts to my sideboard either. I think that's just totally fine. Could play main. Could play main Lavinia as well instead of Karn. That wouldn't be unreasonable. Uh, it might just be better to play just to play the negation. I cut the negation, but maybe we just want the negation. Just to have a little extra counter magic. Top is fine, but it doesn't seem necessary. Don't think I want to add, like, the, the, it's, the, it's really nice that the deck doesn't care a ton about artifact hate. Where, like, I kind of want to ignore artifact hate as much as I possibly can. And so, like, playing a top it can be pretty bad against, um, like, Collector Roof and those kind of things, where we are kind of avoiding that pretty well right now, which I like a lot. Yeah, I think the biggest thing I like is that we don't really care. About, like, we beat Null Rods pretty reasonably, which is not something I can say about other lists that are similar, which I like a lot. I do like that. Overall, I mean, I think we're in the right spot. We have the answers for shops. We just kind of got wrecked by three ball. Our answers for Bazaar are not great, but they're not unreasonable. Like We have, what, six shops answers, six Bazaar answers. Uh, sorry, seven shops answers, six Bazaar answers, some, some layover between, and then a couple extra Flusterstorms for 
like the doomsdays of the world. Well, I don't think we should. I mean, like the fact I, you would you conflate Null Rod with Collector Roof? Because I feel like we can beat both of those. Collector Roof is like a little bit more annoying because of attacking to fairy. And like we're, we should be very good against Vigor because I cut the sagas from the deck. So like I think uh, all the main, all the normal artifact hate that is played in Vintage, we should be pretty great. No, I don't think top's necessary. And I would like to keep my deck pretty good against uh, Artifact Hate. I wonder about this Opal. The Opal it might be unnecessary and extra variants. But it is nice to have more zeros that bounce back. So I'm not sure on that. Like, there aren't any other zeros you can really play. You could play a Petal, but it's not super good. I think it'll usually be worse. This looks good, though. I would definitely play this in a challenge. Yeah, it doesn't need to tap. That is like the like, one of the things we definitely learned along the way is you can totally kill your opponent without tapping. I definitely think the brain freeze is the card that the only card that really stood out to me as being not good. We didn't get to use the Spellseeker, but I I think the Spellseeker has game here. It feels like a really good, maybe not really good, but like maybe the Spellseeker is too cute. But I don't want to play four Astrolabes. I've never wanted to play four Astrolabes in my life. Um, Trinket Mage might be better. I, like at that point, I do want a Sensei Stop though. <laughs> If I play Trinket Mage. I think Spellseeker should be better than... Well, the fact that Trinket Mage gets a Moxon that you can combo off with. That is appealing. But, I don't know. Getting Ancestral and Time Walk. And Demonic. All seem good as well. Yeah, I don't really think you even want the First Nation super well much. But... Yeah. Trinket can get Astrolabe. Yeah, it can. I think it can. Yeah, it should be able to get Astrolabe. Uh, I mean, maybe. Like, I don't think Trinket Mage is an unreasonable card to put here. I just have, like, been waiting for a, sp a deck where Spellseeker is actually good. So, I'm not sure. It was sweet. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you. I appreciate that. Are you liking the videos? Are you commenting on the videos? Are you subscribing to the channel? Those things help me grow the channel, which I appreciate a lot. Uh, I will see you in the next video. Videos release Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on this YouTube channel. I'll see you then.